Hey Mustangs, in this video we're going to be taking a look at cell communication. So, first thing before we actually get started and see how cell communication works, we have to understand that when we look at ourselves, we think of ourselves as an individual, one single organism, but in reality we're actually trillions of cells, trillions of individual organisms all working together as one. And that's going to be the case for all multicellular organisms. We usually see the bigger picture, we see the big organism, but they're actually a whole bunch of individuals, many individual cells, trillions of individual cells, all working together as one. Now in a human being, uh, there's about 37.2 trillion cells that make up a human. That's a lot. Um, so every single one of these cells, in order for it to really work as one single organism, they have to be able to communicate with each other. And it has to be effective communication in order for things to really work out. So all the cells in the body have to communicate with each other and work together as one. If cells don't work together, uh, problems often result. So for example, cancer. Cancer is a really good example of how when cells don't work together, it causes problems in the body. So when you talk about a cancerous cell, it's a cell that no longer works together with uh, the other cells or communicates with the other cells and actually becomes selfish, no pun intended, becomes selfish where it only cares about getting nutrients and stuff for itself and getting rid of its waste and it can care less about the other cells around it. So when you have that many cells all working together, um, all living together, they have to be able to communicate with one another and that's very, very important. One last thing before we actually get into cell communication is taking a look at um, the cell membrane. We know that the cell membrane is very, very important, not just in controlling what goes in and out of a cell, but also in communication. So it's going to be a, it's going to have a huge, huge part in communication. Now, if you take a look here, these are the six main functions of uh, proteins that we find in the cell membrane. So um, we look at transport proteins. They are going to allow stuff to cross in and out of the cell. You have proteins that are in the cell membrane that are involved uh, in chemical reactions, so they're enzymes. You have some that attach to um, the extracellular matrix in order to stabilize and position the cell within the body. Again, you have trillions of cells, so they have to have their place within, that, uh, within the body. Um, cell recognition, so glycoproteins will be used in order to identify cells, so not quite communication, in a way, a form of communication, um, but used for cell identification. Uh, think of your immune system, that's, that's one of the big ones. Uh, intercell intercellular joining, so being able to hold cells together. And then finally, signal transduction. And this basically right here, we're looking at cell communication. All right, so the first thing in order to really understand how cells communicate with each other is to understand that they can't use phones, um, they can't talk to each other. So their form of communication involves using molecules in order to send messages to each other. So right here, signal molecules, chemical messengers, and there's a few other things we can call these, but knowing that molecules are sent out from one cell and they're going to affect another cell. So there's two main parts in communication. There's the molecules, which are basically the messages that get sent out, and in order for other cells to receive those messages, that's where protein receptors come in. So these are proteins that are either a part of the cell membrane or uh, inside the cell that are going to be involved in receiving a chemical message, a, a molecule, and changing what a cell is doing. So the two most important components, I would say, are the signal molecules themselves uh, that are sending out the message, and then the protein receptors in order for a cell to actually receive the message. Now, when a cell sends out its messages, it can be local, where those chemical messages, those, those molecules only affect cells around it, um, or it could be sent out through the whole body. That's basically what hormones are. So hormones are signal molecules that get sent out through the body. Not all cells need to be affected by those signals. So when we take a look here, cells that have protein receptors on them that match the signal molecules those are called target cells. So in order for a signal, in order for a molecule, in order to affect a cell, in order for it to affect a cell, um, the, they have to match. So the protein receptor has to match the signal molecule. If you take a look here, these would not be considered target cells. If you look at the shape of the protein receptor here, and you look at the shape of the signal molecule, 
In this case, we're looking at hormones. Again, hormones are molecules. They've been sent out through the body. They will affect these cells here, so they can affect t their target cells, the ones that have matching protein receptors, but they can't affect cells that don't have protein receptors. So if a cell does have a matching protein receptor for the signal molecule, we call it a target cell. If it doesn't, it's not a target cell. So if you have something like hormones that get dumped into the bloodstream and travel throughout the entire body, they won't affect every cell, even though there's a potential to because they're spreading throughout the entire body, they will only affect cells that have matching protein receptors, that the shape of the signal molecule matches the shape of the protein receptor. Now there's three stages in cell communication or in cell signaling. Okay, the first stage is the signal reception. So reception, think about what, it is, what a reception is, is actually to receive. So the uh, signal reception is when the molecule actually binds to the protein receptor. So when a signaling molecule binds to a protein receptor, that's the first step in communication. You can't go any further than this unless a signal molecule binds to a protein receptor in order to get the whole thing going. So communication doesn't start until the signaling molecule binds to the protein receptor. Now when we're talking about molecules that are involved in cell communication, um, so we can call them signaling molecules, we can call them chemical messengers, and another big one that you'll hear involved in cell communication will be ligands. So any molecule that can go to a target cell and bind to it, bind to a protein receptor, is often referred to as a ligand as well. The second stage in cell communication and cell signaling is the signal transduction pathway. So once the molecule binds to the protein receptor, that was stage one, that causes a kind of domino effect or a chain reaction within the cell that changes molecules from one form to another to another and it's this pathway, should seem familiar, um, like a metabolic pathway that we've seen before in the past. So the molecules, there's many molecules involved in a signal transduction pathway where you see one change to one thing, change to another, or affect another molecule. So just a series of changes in molecules um, that get passed along the way. Now these molecules that are involved in sending the signal, these are called relay molecules. So they, they change, like this one can change this one, which changes this one. So it's just a series of changes of, of different molecules that are basically sending the message, and there's going to be a final destination. So the signal transduction pathway isn't the final destination, it's um, a series of steps leading to a final destination, leading to a final change that we're going to see within the cell. All right, so finally, stage three is the cellular response. So something inside the cell is going to change. And this usually happens in order to respond to overall changes in the body. So sometimes the cell needs to do something different, and it's usually temporary for a short period of time that the cell needs to do something different in order to correct something in the body or respond to something in the body. Um, so at the very end, in stage three here, something's going to happen that's going to actually cause the cell to do something different. And it could affect the chemical reactions that are going on in the cell. So certain chemical reactions could get turned on or off. Um, it can cause DNA to be transcribed and cause uh, different proteins to be made. Or it could stop transcription and stop proteins from being made, which affects what's going on in the cell. So basically, by the end of um, this pathway here, when we get to the cellular response, it's going to change something within the cell um, and it's for a temporary period of time and it's gonna cause that cell to respond to something bigger going on in the body and that that change within that cell um, is going to be that response in order to fix something or respond to something within the body now, there's different types of protein receptors, and we'll be getting into those later. Um, but when you look at protein receptors, there's some protein receptors that can be found embedded in the cell membrane. So these are actually a part of the cell membrane. This is where the cell membrane comes into play as being an important part of cell communication. So these membranes are bound in there. These uh, proteins are bound in there in the cell membrane. and um, they will have a signaling molecule or a ligand bind to them on the outside and that will cause uh, the signal transduction pathway to occur from that point on. Now, when you look at proteins that are 
actually in the cell membrane there and what's binding to them, what the signal protein is, what the ligand is, they're almost always hydrophilic or they have a charge. And the reason for that is these signals that are being sent, because they're hydrophilic, they can't go through the cell membrane. If you remember, hydrophobic molecules can go through. Also, if they're charged, remember, charged molecules can't go through the cell membrane either. So all signaling molecules that are hydrophilic or they have a charge will bind to a receptor protein or a protein receptor that's found in the membrane. And then that will cause a pathway to occur inside there, inside the cytoplasm from that point. Now, opposite of that is intracellular receptors. These are protein receptors that are not embedded in the uh, cell membrane. They're actually floating around there in the cytoplasm. So here, these receptors, they can be found in the cytoplasm or they can be found inside the nucleus. And what will happen here is their ligand or their signal molecule can actually pass through the cell membrane. It can get into the cell. And the reason they can get in is because either they're hydrophobic or they don't have a charge on them. So they can get into the cell very easily. Once that signaling molecule or that ligand gets in, it binds to the protein receptor, and then that starts a signal transduction pathway from there. So here you can see protein receptor there, the uh, signaling molecule or the ligand comes in, binds to it, and leads to a signal transduction pathway of some kind, something that's going to change what the cell is doing for a temporary period of time. All right. Uh, finally, we have the actual ways that the cell can change. So. The whole point of this is to respond to something going on in the body and temporarily change what a cell is doing. So there's three things that can happen uh, once a signaling molecule binds either to a surface protein receptor or a protein receptor inside of the cell. Um, one is turn an enzyme on or off. And if an enzyme's turned on, that's going to start a chemical reaction that doesn't usually happen in that cell. If an enzyme is turned off, it's going to stop a chemical reaction that's normally happening in that cell and that's definitely going to affect what's going on in the cell. So the cell is either going to make something it doesn't usually make or stop making something it usually makes. The second thing is turn genes on or off. So when this happens, it actually can go to the DNA and either start a gene being read, trans being transcribed, and making a certain protein as a result of that, or it can turn a gene off and prevent a protein from being made. So that's another change that can happen. And then finally, rearrangement of the cytoskeleton. So you can actually have the cytoskeleton uh, change in some ways, and that can actually cause certain things to be moved in different places that um, don't normally happen. So that would be the third thing that can happen uh, as part of cellular response.